the angel of the Lord announced unto Mary, and she conceived by the Holy Spirit. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Behold the handmaid of the Lord, be it unto me according to thy word. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. And the Word was made flesh and dwelt among us. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Pray for us, O Holy Mother of God, that we may be made worthy of the promises of Christ. Let us pray. Pour forth, we beseech thee, O Lord, thy grace into our hearts, that we, to the reincarnation of Christ thy Son, was made known by the message of an angel to the Virgin Mary, may by his passion and cross be brought to the glory of his resurrection, through the same Christ our Lord. Amen. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and from the Lord Jesus Christ. Dearly beloved, we have come together in the presence of Almighty God our Heavenly Father to set forth his praise, to hear his holy word, and to ask for ourselves and on behalf of others those things that are necessary for our life and our salvation. And so that we may prepare ourselves in heart and mind to worship him, let us kneel in silence and with penitent and obedient hearts confess our sins so that we may obtain forgiveness by his infinite goodness and mercy. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy upon you. Forgive you all your sins for our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness. And by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. O Lord, open our lips, and our mouths shall proclaim your prayers. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Alleluia. The earth is the Lord's, for he made it. Come, let us adore him. Come, let us sing unto the Lord. Let us shout for joy to the rock of our salvation. Let us come before his presence with thanksgiving and raise a loud shout to him with psalms. The earth is the Lord's, for he made it. Come, let us adore him. For the Lord is a great God and a great King above all gods. In his hand are the caverns of the earth and the heights of the hills are his also. The sea is his, for he made it and his hands mold the dry land. The earth is the Lord's, for he made it. Come, let us adore him. Come, let us bow down and bend the knee, and kneel before the Lord our Maker. For he is our God, and we are the people of his pasture, and the sheep of his hand. Oh, that today you would hearken to his voice. The earth is the Lord's, for he made it. Come, let us adore him. 
Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. The earth is the Lord's, for he made it. Come, let us adore him. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not be in want. He makes me lie down in green pastures, and leads me beside still waters. He revives my soul, and guides me along right pathways for his name's sake. Though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I shall fear no evil, for you are with me, and your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You spread a table before me in the presence of those who trouble me. You have anointed my head with oil, and my cup is running over. Surely your goodness and your mercy shall follow me all the days of my life and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. Thus says the Lord to his anointed, to Cyrus, whose right hand I have grasped, to subdue nations before him, and strip king of their robes, to open doors before him, and the gates shall not be closed. I will go before you and level the mountains. I will break in pieces the doors of bronze, and cut through the bars of iron. I will give you the treasures of darkness, and riches hidden in secret places, so that you may know that it is I, the Lord, the, the God of Israel, who call you by your name. For the sake of my servant Jacob, and Israel my chosen, I will call you by your name. I surname you, though you do not know me. I am the Lord, and there is no other. Beside me, there is no God. I arm you, though you do not know me, so that they may know, from the rising of the sun and from the west, that there is no one besides me. I am the Lord, and there is no other. I form light and create darkness. I make wheel and create woe. I, the Lord, do all these things. Here ends the lesson. You are God, we praise you. You are the Lord, we acclaim you. You are the eternal Father, all creation worships you. To you, all angels, all the powers of heaven, cherubim and seraphim sing in endless praise. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. The glorious company of apostles praise you. The noble fellowship of prophets praise you. The white-robed army of marches praise you. Throughout the world, the Holy Church acclaims you, Father of majesty and bounded, your true and only Son, worthy of all worship, and the Holy Spirit, Advocate and God. You, Christ, are the King of glory, the eternal Son of the Father. When you became man to set us free, you did not shun the virgin's womb. You overcame the sting of death and opened the kingdom of heaven to all believers. You are seated at God's right hand in glory. We believe that you will come and be our judge. Come then, Lord, and help your people, bought with the price of your own blood, and bring us with your saints to glory everlasting. A reading from St. Paul's letter to the church in Thessalonica. Paul, Silvanus, and Timothy, to the church of the Thessalonians in God the Father and the Lord Jesus Christ, grace to you and peace. We always give thanks to God for all of you and mention you in our prayers, constantly remembering before our God and Father your work of faith and labor of love and steadfastness of hope in our Lord Jesus Christ. For we know, brothers and sisters beloved by God, that he has chosen you because our message of the gospel came to you not in word only, but also in power and in the Holy Spirit and with full conviction just as you know what kind of persons we prove to be among you for your sake. 
and you became imitators of us and of the Lord. For in spite of persecution, you received the word with joy, inspired by the Holy Spirit, so that you became an example to all the believers in Macedonia and in, and in Achaia. For the word of the Lord has sounded forth from you, not only in Macedonia and Achaia, but in every place your faith in God has become known, so that we have no need to speak about it. For the people of those regions report about us what kind of welcome we had among you, and how much you turned to God from idols to serve a living and true God, and to wait for his Son from heaven, whom he raised from the dead, Jesus, who rescues us from the wrath that is coming. Here ends the lesson. Blessed be the Lord, the God of Israel. He has come to his people and set them free. He has raised up for us a mighty Savior, born of the house of his servant David. Through his holy prophets, he promised of old that he would save us from our enemies, from the hands of all who hate us. He promised to show mercy to our fathers and to remember his holy covenant. This was the oath he swore to our father Abraham to set us free from the hands of our enemies, free to worship him without fear, holy and righteous in his sight all the days of our life. You, my child, should be called the prophet of the Most High, for you will go before the Lord to prepare his way, to give his people knowledge of salvation by the forgiveness of their sins. In the tender compassion of our God, the dawn from on high shall break upon us, to shine on those who dwell in darkness and the shadow of death, and to guide our feet into the way of peace. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. A reading from the Gospel of Matthew. The Pharisees went and plotted to entrap Jesus in what he said. So they sent their disciples to him, along with the Herodians, saying, Teacher, we know that you are sincere and teach the way of God in accordance with truth, and show deference to no one, for you do not regard people with partiality. Tell us then, what do you think? Is it lawful to pay taxes to the emperor or not? But Jesus, aware of their malice, said, Why are you putting me to the test, you hypocrites? Show me the coin used for the tax. And they brought him a denarius. Then he said to them, Whose head is this, and whose title? They answered, The emperor's. Then he said to them, Give therefore to the emperor the things that are the emperor's, and to God the things that are God's. When they heard this, they were amazed, and they left him and went away. Here ends the lesson. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. One of my biggest pet peeves with the liturgical reform movement, hey, who doesn't have one, is that any holy day that isn't one of the big ones, like Easter, Christmas, the Presentation, the Annunciation, the Visitation, the Transfiguration, to name a few, gets shunted to a weekday. The official reason for this is to emphasize each Sunday as the Day of Resurrection. But the net effect is that Saints' Days get shunted to the hinterland and fall off the radar of the Christian who only goes or tunes into church on Sunday. The Puritans would have been delighted. The Anglican divines, not so much. In the old days, when the resurrection message and commemoration of the saint could occur together, on a day like today, we would be celebrating the feast day of St. Luke, physician, evangelist, and friend of the Apostle Paul. I have a soft spot for St. Luke. On St. Luke's Day in 1987, I was raised to the honor of subdeacon in the Anglican Diocese of Fredericton, so I consider St. Luke to be one of my patrons. 
As is common with the saints of the first century, however, we don't know a lot about St. Luke, and what we know is subject to debate more, I suspect, from the need of scholars to push out publications to stay employed, but that's another talk for another time. What is part of the common tradition is that St. Luke was a devout Gentile, a God-fearer, maybe with some Jewish ancestry, but from what we can see, the gospel attributed to him and the Acts of the Apostles, we see that he had access to a lot of source materials floating around in the first century. From hints in the Acts of the Apostles and the Pauline Epistles, St. Luke joined Paul later in his missionary journeys and was with him in Rome. Tradition holds that St. Luke was also a physician and an artist, as well as an historian. Traditions among Eastern Christians from Greece to India claim that St. Luke, based on personal interviews with the Blessed Virgin herself, was the first to write an icon of her with the infant Jesus, and in fact, wrote several of them. Point of trivia, icons are written, not painted. Several churches, including the Coptic Christians of Egypt and the Syriac Christian community of India, claim to have icons of the Virgin and Child that St. Luke wrote himself. While one may take the whole personal interview idea with some skepticism, it points to the fact that of all the accounts of the Incarnation, St. Luke's account is the most detailed among the canonical sources. St. Mark's account starts with Jesus already at the beginning of his ministry as a fully grown adult. St. John's account dives into the finer points of philosophy. St. Matthew's account focuses on key points of the Messianic prophecies. But St. Luke's is the most personal and relational. In it, we get pictures of the relationships between St. Joseph and the Blessed Virgin, the Blessed Virgin and her cousin Elizabeth, and by extension her husband Zachariah, the prenatal relationship between our Lord and his forerunner, uh, the Holy Family, and still we get a picture not just of the humanity of Jesus, but of his otherness as well. St. Luke more than any other accounts, depicts the tension and the harmony between the human and divine natures within the person of Jesus more than any of the other Gospels. Now, the Gospel readings for the Feast of St. Luke are all over the map. Currently, in the Episcopal Church lectionary, it is St. Luke's Gospel in chapter 4, verses 14 through 21, where Jesus is at home in Nazareth and reads a selection from Isaiah to a mixed review. In the Anglican Church of Canada, in its 1962 official lectionary, it pulls from chapter 24, from verse 44 to the end of the Gospel, where Jesus is giving his last address to the disciples before he ascends into heaven. In the Church of England 1662 lectionary, and in the current Roman Catholic lectionary, it's from chapter 10, verses 1 through 7, which is the commissioning of the 70 disciples to go out throughout all Judea. Whereas the Orthodox Church calls from the same chapter, but from verses 16 through 21, where the 70 come back to Jesus and report on what progress and success they had. I would argue that these older lectionaries, the Church of England, the Roman Catholic, and the Orthodox, are probably the better readings for the feast, and I'm going to show you why. Consider in chapter 10, verses 2 and 3, And Jesus said to them, The harvest is plentiful, but the laborers are few. Pray therefore the Lord of the harvest to send out laborers into the harvest. Go your way. Behold, I send you out as lambs in the midst of wolves. Next to this, we'll pull from the Orthodox reading from verse 20. Nevertheless, don't rejoice in this, that the spirits are subject to you. Rejoice that your names are written in heaven. Jesus had sent these 70 disciples out into a minefield full of disbelief, sickness, despair, and firmly in the thrall of the powers of darkness. But against any rational expectation, these disciples met with a great deal of success. 
However, it wasn't the spectacular successes that Jesus wanted these disciples to remember. With any success comes risk. Risk of assigning too much importance to oneself. Risk of getting cocky and overconfident. Risk of losing the big picture. That big picture, the evangelist reminds us, is as Jesus told the 70, that their names are written in heaven. Brothers and sisters, we joined the ranks of the 70 when we were baptized. We took on their mission to proclaim the kingdom of God. Now we hear a lot about that, don't we? Proclaim the kingdom of God, where we actually look out for each other. We take no thought for our own well-being. We trust in others to look out for us while we look out for them. Remember that those who are forgotten and shunted aside and love God with every fiber of our being, proclaiming the good news of Jesus Christ to all who will listen, letting our lights shine so brightly that people can't help but ask what lit that lamp, loving the unlovable because God himself loves them and loving God because we cannot help but love what, whom he loves. St. Luke, however, has this caution for us. Like the 70, we're sent out into hostile territory. Not everyone will listen to our words of hope. There will be those who actively oppose us. And the message, actually, is dangerous to the self-interested. The message challenges every twisted value loved by this world. Despite this, we will have some good moments, but we need to keep in front of us that it's not the victories, it's not the defeats, but that our names are written in heaven, in the book of life. Now, many have a picture in their heads that there is an actual ledger in heaven where names are scribbled in or crossed out on a regular basis, and often the picture includes an apostle or an angel at the desk doing the job. Do you hear that sound? It's the collective sound of apostles and evangelists banging their heads on their desks in frustration. To be blunt, the Book of Life is an allegory. It's an allegory for the relationship between us and God, restored by Christ's redeeming us from death and sin. Because we're redeemed, because we are now back in relationship with God, we uphold what's important to God, loving him and all his children, all of them not just the ones we like. That's what it means to be written in the book of life and what it means to proclaim the kingdom of God. It's practical. A relationship with God means becoming his willing agents in a world that may not want us, but definitely needs us and certainly needs God. And that is possible only because Jesus affected that reconciliation. Jesus brought us to the Father. Jesus sent us out into the world. It's Jesus' message that we bring to love God with all one's heart and soul and mind and strength and to love our neighbors as ourselves. If we hold that St. Luke is the first writer of Icons of the Blessed Virgin, keep in mind that he always showed her pointing to our Lord. The gospel that he wrote points to our Lord. The history of the apostles that he wrote points to our Lord. When we look to our Lord, we see our redemption and our reconciliation, but moreover, what that means. Through him, we find reconciliation with God. And in that reconciliation, we bring that message to all around us. As St. Luke encourages us, let's rejoice that our names are written in the book of life. Now let's make that count for something. Through the prayers of the Most Holy Theotokos and Ever Virgin Mary, Savior, save us. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit 
and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Save your people, Lord, and bless your inheritance. Govern and uphold them now and always. Day by day we bless you. We praise your name forever. Lord, keep us from all sin today. Have mercy on us, Lord, have mercy. Lord, show us your love and mercy, for we put our trust in you. In you, Lord, is our hope, and we shall never hope in vain. Almighty and everlasting God, in Christ you have revealed your glory among the nations. Preserve the works of your mercy, that your church throughout the world may persevere with steadfast faith in the confession of your name. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. O oh God, you make us glad with the weekly remembrance of the glorious resurrection of your Son, Give us this day such blessings for our worship of you, that the week to come may be spent in your favor. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Lord Jesus Christ, you stretched out your arms of love on the hard wood of the cross, that everyone might come within the reach of your saving embrace. So clothe us in your spirit, that we, reaching forth our hands in love, may bring those who do not know you to the knowledge and love of you, for the honor of your name. Amen. Almighty God, you have given us grace at this time with one accord to make our common supplication to you. And you have promised your well-beloved Son that when two or three are gathered together in his name, you will be in the midst of them. Fulfill now, O Lord, our desires and petitions as may be best for us granting us in this world knowledge of your truth, and in the age to come, life everlasting. Amen.
you gave them bread from heaven, alleluia, containing within itself all sweetness, alleluia. Blessed be God. Blessed be the holy and undivided Trinity. Blessed be God the Father, maker of heaven and earth. Blessed be Jesus Christ, true God and true man. Blessed be Jesus Christ in his death and resurrection. Blessed be Jesus Christ on his throne of glory. Blessed be Jesus Christ in the sacrament of his body and blood. Blessed be God, the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life. Blessed be God and the Virgin Mary, Mother of our Lord. Blessed be God and Joseph, guardian of the incarnate Word. Blessed be God in his angels and in his saints. Blessed be God. In union, O blessed Jesus, with the faithful gathered at every altar of your church, where your blessed body and blood are offered this day, I long to offer you praise and thanksgiving for my creation, preservation, and all the blessings of this life. For the redemption won for us by your life, death, and resurrection, for the means of grace, and for the hope of glory. I believe that you are truly present in the Holy Sacrament, and since I cannot at this time receive communion, I pray you to come into my heart. I unite myself with you, and embrace you with all my heart, my soul, and my mind. Let nothing separate me from you. Let me serve you in this life until, by your grace, I come to your glorious kingdom and unending peace. Amen. Come, Lord Jesus, and dwell in my heart in the fullness of your strength. Be my wisdom and guide me in right pathways. Conform my life and my actions to the image of your holiness. And in the power of your gracious might, rule over every hostile power that threatens or disturbs the growth of your kingdom, who with the Father and the Holy Spirit lives and reigns, one God, in glory everlasting. Amen. Let us pray. O God, our Father, who in the wonderful sacrament of the altar has left us a living memorial of the passion and resurrection of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, grant that we may ever perceive within ourselves the power of your indwelling life, and thus, by the glad outpouring of our lives and your service, we may know ourselves to be living out the fruit of his redemption, 
who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. May the souls of all the faithful departed, through the mercy of God, rest in peace. Amen. And the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen. Mary, we hail you, Mother and Queen compassionate. Mary, most humble, great and pure, we hail you. To you, we exiles, children of Eve, lift our voices. To you, we sing praises, because by the Spirit you brought forth to us the Savior. Turn now, therefore, O our intercessor, your eyes of pity and loving kindness upon us sinners. Then, at the last, when our earthly journey has been ended, Show us, Jesus, the blessed fruit of your womb. O gentle, O tender, O gracious Virgin Mary. Pray for us, O Holy Mother of God, that we may be made worthy of the promises of Christ. Let us pray. Almighty and everlasting God, who by the overshadowing of the Holy Spirit prepared the body and soul of the glorious Virgin Mary, to become a habitation for your Son. Grant that as we rejoice in her obedience, we may have the support of her loving intercession and may be delivered from our present evils and eternal death. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. May the divine help remain with us always and with our absent brothers and sisters. Amen. <laughs>